Hello and welcome. This is Microsoft Flight Simulator and this is the Phoenix Airbus A320. And today I would like to come back to a question that someone asked me in the comments. And the question was, could you please make a video regarding flaps, slats on the Airbus? Maybe explain which flap setting to use when and how the correct procedure is. For example, if you take off with flap 3, how to retract them in the correct order. Yeah, I'm going to do that with pleasure. It's actually quite an interesting topic. Airbus has a fairly unique flap slat system where a flap lever position doesn't necessarily always give you the same result. Okay, without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the Airbus A320 series has slats here at the front of the wing and flaps at the back of the wing. If we look at the flaps lever, you can see that we have five positions. 0, 1, 2, 3 and full. However, these two different things depending on the status of the aircraft. So let's start with us being on the ground. So we're just sitting on the runway, we're getting ready for takeoff uh, and we move the lever from 0 to 1. And on the ground this gives us 1 plus F. And you can see that both slats and flaps are moving. The slats have now moved down 18 degrees and the flaps have moved 10 degrees. Okay, now still on the ground, we're moving the flap lever from 1 to 2. We can see both flaps and slats are moving and if we look outside, the flaps are now at 15 degrees and the slats are at 22 degrees. Okay, next we move the flap lever from position 2 to position 3. And as you can see, it is only the flaps that have moved, but not the slats. So if we look outside, the slats are still at 22 degrees, but the flaps are now at 20 degrees. And finally, we move the flap lever from flaps 3 to flaps full. And as you can see, both slats and flaps are moving. Let's have a look outside again. And the slats have now moved to 27 degrees and the flaps have moved to 35 degrees. This is the lowest position for both slats and flaps. Okay, we are now airborne. We are cruising along at 4000 feet and we would like to slow down to put down the first set of flaps. So you have these two orange lines here, which is called VFE next. So this is the maximum speed at which you can put down the next set of flaps. So we are above that, so we cannot put the flaps down yet. At my company, we have the following procedure. We need to be at VFE next minus 10. And if possible, you should have a negative trend vector here on the speed scale and only then are we allowed to put the flaps down. So minus 10, negative trend vector and we're now moving the flaps lever from 0 to 1. If you look, we do not get 1 plus F. What we get instead is flaps 1 and the flaps themselves haven't moved. It is only the slats that are moving. Let's look outside. And here you can see that the flaps are still at zero, but the slats have moved to 18 degrees. So this is different to what we get on the ground. Okay, we're slowing down further. As you can see, we're just 10 knots below, negative trend vector, flaps one, two flaps two. And now you can see both slats and flaps are moving. Let's look outside again. And we have now moved into the same position that we had on the ground with slats at 22 degrees and flaps at 15 degrees. Okay, speed is good. Flaps 3. And as you can see, just like on the ground, the slats stay in this position but the flaps have moved. And we are now looking at slats 22 
still like before and flaps 20 degrees, just like on the ground. And finally we move to flaps full. And as you can see both slats and flaps are moving. And just like on the ground we now have the slats at 27 degrees and flaps at 30 degrees. So to sum up you have five different flap positions that will give you six different flap slats combinations. So when do we use which flap position? Let's start with the takeoff. The only acceptable takeoff flap position are flaps 1 plus F, flaps 2 and flaps 3. So which one should you take? Well we luckily in the real world we have a very clever software that tells us exactly what we should use and it takes a lot of things into account. You in the sim unfortunately don't have that luxury so let me give you some pointers. The standard takeoff position for the Airbus A320 is 1 plus F. It will work for pretty much any runway that is long enough. If you find yourself at a small Greek airport with a very short runway like Skiatos, it's very likely that you're gonna need either flaps 2 or flaps 3. Now there's always a bit of a compromise. If you are in somewhere like Skiatos where you take off out over the water, your climb performance after takeoff is not really an issue. So flap 3 would be the best because you have the shortest takeoff run. Of course after takeoff the aircraft would climb a bit slower because you have a lot of drag. The flaps are actually quite far out as we can see. But it doesn't matter because you're over the water. Now if you find yourself at an airport with a short runway but surrounded by high terrain, it might be better to use flaps 2 and instead use toga instead of a flex takeoff. Then you still have a shorter takeoff run that you would have with flaps 1 plus F, but you would also have a better climb performance. And this is important in case of engine failure, because that's what it's all about. Like I said to you in the MCDU video, we always expect the worst case, and that's what we prepare for. So when we choose the flap setting, we don't think about a normal departure, we think about a one engine out departure, so to speak. This also becomes uh, important later on when I talk to you about the landing. Yes, you have the same considerations, but think if I approach the airport at flaps full and then I have to do a go around and I lose an engine on the go around, the procedure is to move the flaps lever just one up from flaps full to flaps three. Will that give me too much drag to really get a good climb performance on just one engine. If the runway is long enough and you only have one engine, it might be better to land with flaps 3 because then in case of go around, you're going to flaps 2 and that will give you a better climb performance on just one engine. So there's a lot to think about with these things. Like I said, in the real world we have software, but it doesn't mean we don't alter what the software gives us. Sometimes we overrule it and make our own decisions based on experience and certain conditions. Uh, but for you in the sim, I would say the following. Use 1 plus F whenever you can. If the runway is short, look at flaps 2, maybe toga. And if the runway is really short, and you have no mountainous terrain on the departure, by all means, go for flaps 3. I actually had takeoffs with flaps 3 and toga because we were that heavy and the runway was that short. Okay, well now let's talk about landing. So which landing flaps can you use? First of all, the only two landing positions allowed are flaps full and flaps 3. So when should you use flaps full? When should you use flaps three? It is really like with uh, the takeoff down to you as the pilot. Flaps full will obviously give you a slower approach speed and a shorter landing distance, which is very useful if you're landing on a short runway or even if you land on a long runway, but a lot of busy airports request you to leave the runway as soon as possible. So you don't want to dilly dally and block the runway for too long. So you come in with full flaps even on a 4,000 meter runway and leave as soon as you can. 
Flaps 3, however, has two advantages. First of all, it uh, gives you a higher speed, meaning that usually you have better control, especially in gusty conditions, at least that's my experience. In fact, Airbus says if wind shear is uh, forecast and you expect a wind shear escape maneuver, use flap 3. It also reduces the drag, so it helps you if you apply toga. And most importantly, probably it saves fuel. Uh, not a lot. I believe it's something in the region of 30 to 40 kilograms. But you know, in aviation, everything adds up. 40 kilograms on each and every approach, six times a day for a fleet of 100 aircraft. If you add it all up, you end up at a pretty high number of tons of fuel saved. So it's really up to you. The only thing you need to bear in mind, if you decide to land with flaps three, don't forget in the performance page, to go to the approach and activate config 3 and then on the overhead panel up here press landing flaps 3 so that way the aircraft knows what you're doing and you're not going to get any unnecessary warnings okay and the next question was how does the flap movement actually work on the airbus well i'm gonna take you through a flight so we take off, let's say with one plus F. So we take off and then once we reach the flap retraction altitude, you simply go to flaps zero. If you take off with flaps two, you accelerate to F speed and then you put flaps one, accelerate further and then at the right speed, select flap zero. However, if you take off with flaps 3, the procedure is slightly different. You take off with flaps 3, you accelerate, and then you move from flaps 3 directly to flaps 1. And once you have accelerated further, you can move the lever from flaps 1 to flaps 0. So the rule on the Airbus is, we leave go around to the side now. Whatever flap setting you have, you move to flap 1 and then once you've accelerated further you move to flap 0 so that's the general rule for flap retraction so what about in the go around well go around is slightly different so let's say we are ready in flaps full we're in the full landing configuration and we have to do a go around the call out is go around flaps and the reason why we do that call out is because you need to move the flap lever up by one position. So if you do a landing in flaps 3, you move it to flaps 2. And if you land with uh, flaps full, you move the flap lever to flaps 3. Then you accelerate and then the game starts again. Once you pass a high enough speed, you move the flap lever to 1 and then to 0. And that is the only time I can think of where you would move the flap lever from a lower position up only by one. In all other cases, you always move it to position one. Interesting side note, if you do a go around and you're in flaps three and then you move to flaps one, even though you're airborne, the aircraft will give you flaps one plus F. So this is one of the few occasions where you can actually select one plus F in the air. Another more technical point. Early on I showed you the two orange dots that we see when we move the flap levers. And they show you VFE next, which is the highest speed for the next flap setting. Now these are actually linked to the flap lever position and not aerodynamically calculated. The only things that are aerodynamically calculated are things like maximum speed, minimum speed, things like that. So what that means is, and we are now really diving deep into the Airbus, if your flap lever actually fails and doesn't work anymore, when you move it, you will not get the orange lines because the aircraft doesn't know where the flap lever is. 
and so in order for you to follow the procedure and to know when to move the flap lever because you still have to do it even though the flaps don't work we have this nice placket here and it will give you the maximum speeds for each flap position so the procedure is you slow down let's say you want to put down flaps 1 to VFE minus 5 so you go down to 225 knots and then you move the flap lever to position 1. I know this is abnormals now, we usually don't do abnormals, but I thought it's an interesting side fact. Who knows, maybe at some point in the future we will actually go into some abnormals. But um, yeah, I just thought this is uh, something very interesting for you to know. Okay, the next bit, I have to be honest with you, I wasn't sure whether I should include it in this video or not, because again, it's gonna get a bit technical now, but given the feedback you've given me on my recent videos, I think you like those kind of nerdy things and when we really get uh, deep down into the Airbus systems. So, let's go a bit deeper on what I just told you. I told you that on the ground, if you select flaps lever 1 you get 1 plus F and that is correct and in the air if you go from 0 to 1 you get flaps 1 so you only get the slats but not the flaps so what if you take off and you have a speed restriction by ATC that is a bit awkward you know something like 220 knots some airports have that you don't really want to fly it with flaps 1 plus F because it's a bit close uh, but how do you get from flaps 1 plus F to flaps 1 in the air? Now you might think, well, if you retract the flaps and then move them back to 1, then you have flaps 1. And you would be right, but actually this is not what we are supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be moving flaps up and down. So how do you get from flaps 1 plus F to flaps 1 after takeoff? And to be honest with you, I have no idea if the Phoenix can do this, but I'm gonna try it out. So let's see. Okay, so we have just taken off. I've just done the level off and you can see we are flying at 195 knots. We are still in flaps 1 plus F and now we have this awkward speed restriction of, I don't know, let's say 220. So a bit too fast for 1 plus F but almost a bit too slow as well. So all I'm gonna do now is increase the speed to 220 and let the aircraft accelerate. And as you can see, all of a sudden the maximum speed has moved. And if you look here, we are now in flaps one. The aircraft automatically retracts the flaps and just leaves the slats out. This is called flap auto retraction. It only works in this particular scenario. It will not work on the approach. Uh, so you cannot avoid a flap over speed warning if you fly too fast. But for this particular scenario Airbus really did a great job because it gives you the opportunity to go from 1 plus F to flaps 1 without actually doing anything the aircraft will just do it for you and now we have a nice comfortable flap setting we can stick to the speed limit and we don't have to worry about being too slow pretty clever i think and with that we have reached the end of the video i really hope you found this useful and interesting thanks again for the questions in the comments like I said previously, I have a lot of them now and I try to work my way through them as best as I can. I hope you found this video useful and I look forward to seeing you again in the next one. Until then, all the best. Bye bye.